Hello, hello. Welcome everybody to Adobe Live. My name is Paco Siller and I'm here with my friend Wojtek. Wojtek, hello. Say hello to everybody to the stream. Hey everyone. Hey Paco. Uh, lovely to be here. Super, super excited. Yes, I'm very excited too. We're going to be doing some video editing cutdowns. I'm going to let Wojtek actually explain what the plan of attack is for today. But of course, as always, I got to introduce everybody to the chat, let you know what's going on today and this week, and we'll jump right into it. So really quickly, I see some friends already in the chat. I see Steve, I see Cody, I see Uriel, Mercurial. Hey, that kind of rhymes. I see Ferry, Robert. Hey yes, thank you all for joining. Um, as always, I love to see where everybody is tuning in from. I know Steve is from New Zealand. He already called that out. And Steve, we have oh, a surprise wow. for you <laughs> because this live stream actually has quite a bit to do with New Zealand. So we will get into that in just a sec. Um, another thing to call out real quick is we have a new set of Photoshop daily creative challenges going on this week with our one and only Sam Peterson. Sam's been rocking it. It's the first time that he's been doing the Photoshop daily creative challenges with us. And he is just killing it. So stick around for those. Um, and yeah, we'll have and we also have a new set of Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges with Paul Tranny. And uh, we'll have Claudie from Print My Soul coming on later on today. Um, all right. So without further ado, Wojtek, I want to just hand the microphone over to you and just tell us a little bit about yourself before we start getting into Premiere Pro and doing some video editing. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paco. My name is Wojtek and I'm a creative and storyteller based in Cologne, Germany. And I'm also a traveler who's uh, who had the privilege to really explore just parts of uh, this beautiful planet for 555 consecutive days. Wow. And yeah, yeah, I'm still um, eternally grateful for that experience. And it turns out that after you've done it, you just realized how much of a privilege it actually has been, right? Um, and I would love to call myself a photographer, videographer, filmmaker, or anything, but I refrain from using those titles since I'm completely self-taught. I uh, started making videos like four years ago, um, which came simultaneously with quitting my job. What I actually learned is to be a clerk in the insurance business. Not very exciting. This, though, is um, very, very different. And I started with vlogs, then kind of proceeded into travel vlogs, but I never really liked the kind of restraints of the travel niche, if uh, you could say so. And I was always looking for a way to bring a bit more depth to um, to just, just to those vlogs I was doing, which was hard because vlogs are enjoyable, right? They're simple. And um, it turned out I had to find another format for me. And I started experimenting um, at the end of 2018, did a project uh, that is called What is Freedom with people from all around the world. And that was the first time for me approaching I don't want to use the word cinematic, but uh, approaching a more film-like video. And from there on out, I still keep on learning and um, exploring the creative field in video and just visual media in general. And not even a week ago, I would have not thought that I would today do a live with Adobe, with Paco and you guys. So uh, thanks again so much for having me. And I'm super excited to be here. Of course. Yep. And yet here you are. So thank you for joining us. Um, I'm not sure if you notice, but I do have your Instagram up. So everybody give just Wojtek a follow. He's got some very, very cool stuff, has some videos about New Zealand and here's his overall profile. So anything we want to call out real quick here, Wojtek, before we jump into it? Uh, yeah, no, not really. People, I think you, you get the best idea if you check out the Instagram and also my YouTube, mm -hmm. then um, you really know what I'm into and what I'm about. And I think if you just watch one travel video, you, you will get a pretty good idea. Right on. Uh, cool. All right. So what is the plan for today? Let us know what we're going to be doing. The plan for today is to revisit a video project I finished recently. It's called Escaping to New Zealand. And I really want to go over the full process, how I started the project with a script, how the planning went, if there actually was any planning, and also how I approach sound design and how I use it for storytelling. And then we want to create a social cut from the edit I made. Amazing. Cool. So we're going to get into that in one second. Real quick, we do have some people calling out where they're viewing from. Uh, we have Uriel from Texas, from, Min from Minneapolis, Caitlin. Um, we got Caitlin from Arizona. Yes. Wow. So thank you again for joining us. We always have a worldwide audience, so I'd love to see that. Um, all right. So now we are going to watch the video. 
So this video is about how, what's the length of it, Boy Tech? It's about nine minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah, about nine minutes. That's right. Cool. So we're going to watch the whole project and see this amazing story that Voitech created. And I believe it's in New Zealand, which is one of, I think, the coolest countries that I've been to. I'm very biased. I spent some time there and I absolutely love it. So we're definitely going to nerd out over New Zealand for this stream. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and watch this full video that Voitech created for us. I haven't seen it, so this is going to be a viewing experience for all of us. I'm very excited. So we will be watching that video for the next nine minutes. And then after that, we're going to show how to make a sort of teaser or social friendly cut down of this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and premiere this video live for the first time here on Adobe Live. Are you ready, boy? Tech? Definitely. OK, cool. So I'm on your screen now. So go ahead and play it whenever you're ready. All right. Here we go. Traveling has never been an escape for me. I've said that, I've preached that, and I believed that. Until I realized how badly I needed one. Together Kat and I have been traveling for almost one and a half years. And even though I had the time of my life, I really wasn't in a good place at the end of it. Between our adventures, I have either been broke or working. Being a digital nomad sounds romantic up to the point where you realize how working actually sucks all over the world. It doesn't matter where you are when you don't get to do what you actually want to. That whole freedom thing. I seem to got that wrong. It was about time to get it right. I still have trouble to comprehend or believe what we've seen in these six weeks. We went to a place where souls depart and oceans meet. We set foot on an island that literally blew up just a month later. We walked on the path of a mighty glacier. And witnessed it disappearing. We almost froze over at a night hike. <laughs> just to be compensated with the most incredible view up to this day.
course, we went to the famous Instagram spot. And beyond. Because we knew. It is always worth the summit. I lost a tear or two this day. With happiness. And just on one cruise, we've seen enough waterfalls for a lifetime. But is it ever really enough? You might think at that point we would have seen it all. If not for a crazy large and a probably bluest lake you can imagine. If not for a 30 year young lake that shouldn't even be there. Taking our last hike, walking up to our last little adventure, and stealing a glance at the highest peak of the nation. Knowing our 555 days of travel were about to end, we decided to start a new chapter. It has been over a year since and I, I can't even... I'm sure you feel me at least in some way. I really feel like escaping right now. I would love to go back. Uh, if I could go back, like right now, I definitely would. At least to correct that terrible cinematography of mine, that there's a chance you did not even see, you did not even notice, you did not even care for it. But to me, that's just showing me how much time has passed since, how much time flies. And even though it seemed like the world stood still last year, all those memories, I really feel like closing a chapter. And just like the time we stopped traveling around the world, I feel like starting a new one. But until then, there's lots of travel vlogs coming up for you, just for all time's sake, you know? <laughs> In the meantime, I guess, I'll be working on my future. Until then, I see you. Wow, so I got goosebumps, not gonna lie. 
That was an absolutely beautiful story that you told, Wojtek. And I can't believe that was nine minutes long. Usually when you when you see travel videos there, you're a little bit on the shorter side, but this one just went by like that because it was so engaging. The sound design was on point and the editing was amazing. Very good stuff, my friend. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to hear that. It was actually quite interesting to watch it a bit um, with a bit more distance because I don't know how it is for other people, but when I edit these things, like at the end of it, I'm just purely technical about everything and I don't feel anything. That was very different watching it now. Um, yeah, thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. It it made me miss New Zealand for sure. I spent some time there as well. Wojtek and I were talking about it right before we jumped on live. And man, that is just, that's that's a that's a country. It is just so, so beautiful. And I think you captured it so, so well, my friend. So great job. Thank you, I, I really enjoyed Thanks. watching that for the first time live with you all as well. So that was very cool stuff. Yeah, I'd actually be keen on what the community thinks. What do you guys think? How was that? Yeah, please let us know. So we all just watched this for the first time. I feel like we all gathered around and watched this screening for the first time. It's probably the closest I've had to a movie theater experience since we've been in this crazy world that we've been in for the past year. So let us know what you think. Um, it takes a little bit of while to see these comments pop up, but please let us know what you thought of this video. I mean, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so beautiful. And the editing, the sound design, the cinematography was very, very on point. So, yep, let us know. Um, in the meantime, while Thank we you. wait for these comments to come in, Wojtek, uh, what's what's the next plan here? What uh, what, what do we want to do now? Maybe we want to hop into Premiere. Yeah, let's let's jump into the edit and um, maybe to give a little bit context. So I have to thank past Wojtek in the video for explaining a little bit. So he mentioned the terrible cinematography of mine. It was not only terrible cinematography, but it was actually my very first camera with a kit lens. I was learning how to manually film. I basically did not know what I was doing. Like New Zealand was the first country where I did not use the auto mode to film. And um, I screw up parts, but luckily I had six weeks of footage. Um, maybe let me um, even show you guys. So what I do when I have these big, big projects is I um, create a select timeline and that's it. It's it's about an hour long, really just with bits and pieces from everywhere I thought might be useful. And then I create a second timeline just to get an overview, which I've called select final in this case. Um, so I did just have an idea where to find what. So you can see here's plants, nature, wave, hiking, um, just to really uh, navigate through that whole process. And the reason I think revisiting this project and speaking about it um, might be super exciting for some of you is because um, it's it's not really a technique, but it's a way I use to um, turn unrelated footage into a cohesive piece and also reuse old footage without, you know, putting on a retro layer and making all feel nostalgic, but actually um, create a cohesive piece from that puzzle. And it usually starts with planning. Now I've already explained there was no planning. I basically just shot everything for six weeks and had some ideas in my head, but then we came back, 2020 happened and I didn't edit much. And now two years later, I finally got to this one. But what I had was one line, one line. And I usually always start with a script. Uh, excuse me, it was actually two lines. So what I had were those two lines. And that was in my head when we were traveling New Zealand. Traveling has never been an escape for me until I realized how badly I needed one. And I'm not sure, please stop me, Paco, if I start philosophizing too much. But um, when I was traveling, I always had this idea about escapism being something. Uh, I, I was kind of looking down on people until I realized how much literally I needed an escape from always trying to put meaning into something and taking a step forward in my life and all that. Um, so like it's written here, I've said that, I've preached that, and I believe that. And I actually thought about inserting um, the definition of escapism into the video. But in the end, I refrained from that just because I thought the video can speak for itself. And what I wanted to show is that escapism is not always fleeing for something, but sometimes it's stepping out of the known, stepping into the unknown and getting a new perspective on things. Um, so... Now that you know that I literally had like four lines. Um, who? Okay, there's a little bit of loading. There we go. Yeah, and that while we do that, I do want to call out some of the comments that I'm seeing oh, yeah, about sure, the lovely. video. 
Um, yeah, so Ferry says that video makes me feel like I was there. That's a really cool comment. Uh, Steve says, Thank very you so awesome. Much. Cinematography and storytelling are spectacular. Uh, I love the sound, the hiking boots and all the water, beautifully shot. The weight of how you were feeling definitely came through. So yes, I think the sentiments are all shared by the community. It wow. was very, very awesome edit. And I do want to nerd out with you for just a second. Yeah, um, sure. I'd love to know what you shot this with. Uh, I think I saw on your Instagram, you're working maybe with a mirrorless camera, DSLR, yeah. um, with a kit lens. So yeah, let us know what you shot this with. Curious yeah, it's mirrorless. It's, it's, um, it's a mirrorless camera. It's a Panasonic Lumix. Um, these days it's a GH5 with a Sigma 18 to 35 and 25, 17. I love those. Back then it was a Lumix. Um, it's I think 85 in the States, uh, depending on the country, it's G80 or G81. Um, so it's the, the updated version of the G7, basically, with a kit lens, um, 12 to 60, 3.5 to 5.6 or something without an ND. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, no. <laughs> well, the why? Because of the f-stop, the 5.6? Um, so I still love this camera and I love this lens because it just enabled me to do so much. But I just, back then, I didn't know what I would need an ND for. I didn't know right. the shutter rule, none of those things. And um, when I was working, I never realized how important those actually were until I finally learned it. And then I started seeing it. And I think many of those things um, influence you or influence viewers subconsciously. So I think um, even if you don't have the perfect tools, you can still create beautiful things out of it. It's just that I hold myself accountable to develop my skills, not only as a storyteller, but also technically. Yeah, I think you bring up a very good point, Wojtek. And I think when people want to start out videography or really anything, like photography or anything that requires purchase of gear, I think it's important to try it first, maybe with the tools you have. Most camera or smartphones have cameras and realize what you need to purchase, right? I mean, I, I don't ever recommend to go out and buy all this gear because sometimes you don't even know if you need that gear or not, you know, start small. And then the more you do it, the more you realize like, oh, you know what? Maybe I need an ND filter to get that shallow depth of field and get that beautiful bokeh in the shots. Or maybe I need a monitor to keep an eye out on those shadows or highlights, or maybe I don't want any of that because I want to be as portable as possible in a GH5 with an autofocus kit lens. We'll do just that. So yeah, very good stuff. Um, I did want to call out, we are big fans of the GH5 here in Adobe Live. It's actually what I'm using right now as a camera. We actually in the oh, studio, awesome. we film with GH5s. Um, they're very nimble little cameras, so very good stuff. Yeah, super versatile camera. And um, also to, to just maybe add this, like even if you don't have the perfect gear, you can do so much in post with, with Premiere, like um, smooth things out and really um, right. regain those highlights, even if something's blown out. So um, that was always, I mean, um, Premiere is really the program I started with and started on, I'm not sure what's right. And um, it's, it's been a blessing for all those things uh, I screwed up during the shoot. <laughs> yeah, it's good. And I, were you shooting sort of in a flat profile to give you some wiggle room to bring no. some shadows and highlights back? So you were still able no. to save it just, folk, just shooting on H.264? Or <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I um, think I've selected Cine-D as a mode. So um, Cine-D, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that's sort of a flat profile. It's not a true log profile. Yeah. Like um, each camera has their own proprietary log file. Mm -hmm. Log files are the equivalent of like shooting raw in photography. It just gives you a yeah. flat image. It looks horrible out of the camera. But you yeah. have so much wiggle room in post to kind of color grade or bring back highlights and shadows. Um, kind of a middle ground of that, I'd say, is mm -hmm. something that Panasonic has is the Cine-D where it's yeah. not 100% log, but I'd say it's a middle ground between log and already like a good looking profile. And I actually yeah. shoot in Cine-D as well for personal videos because mm -hmm. unless I'm doing a commercial production where you need that data of a log file and the headaches that can come with it, but gives you a lot of freedom, uh, Cine-D is just easier and it gives you enough yeah. to kind of play around with in Premiere. It definitely speeds up the process um, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And it's also good to um, experiment at the beginning, like depending on, on, on what kind of filmmaker or creator you are, um, you might not always use a log profile, just like you said. So um, right. I like using these days the V-Log profile on the GH5 just to um, get more familiar with it and to get used to the workflow and get the most out of it. But um, that being said, that doesn't mean that I will always use it. But uh, like exactly. um, lately I've been on a shoot and then they said they don't need a log profile. So why would I do that? Why would I color correct that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I'd say just know what the edit is going to be. Like if you're trying to make this super, right. super cinematic or it's commercial, then you might want to shoot with a flat profile. 
Or if you want to make it easier, then don't, right? You're just going to make it harder for yeah. yourself because <laughs> the output is social and you don't need that. Then stuff to think about. Um, we have a question in the chat and then let's jump into the edit, Wojtek. But we do have a yeah, question sure. saying, was the sound recording done separately or just through the DSLR? Yeah, so this um, is another thing very specific to this video or let me maybe put it up this way. Um, I've deleted all raw sound to different reasons. Um, so on the one hand, at this time, um, New Zealand was the last country we were traveling and um, my mic has gone through rain and wind and dust and has been in volcanoes. So I was using it very cautiously and sometimes I was not even recording audio. Um, so the raw audio is messed up, but I still could have used it. And usually I like to do it because sometimes you get those sounds you cannot really found, find in the sound effects library. But for this one, I've um, put myself up to the challenge to create the sound completely from sound effects. And I wasn't even using as many sound effects as I thought I would do. Um, but yeah, so it's all created, uh, quote unquote, artificially. And these are all the sound effects that I used. And I actually repurposed a lot of those. And uh, this is also something I want to get into, the, the sound design process and how you can use it for storytelling. Yeah, it's a great segue. Let's get into it. All right. Uh, yeah, so like I said, I had my, my initial few lines and um, that was what I could build on. But really in the video, you see, I would have only made it about until here, which is like, what, 10% of the whole video. So that's not much. And uh, so I started thinking, what do I want this video to be about? Um, so the easiest way is to always approach it and just tell what it actually was. So we've been having for one and a half years. And uh, it was great, but I was going also through a very um, tough time in New Zealand. Um, not tough in, in the sense of uh, I didn't know how to make it through or anything, but it was like um, one of those moments where you feel like you basically have everything, like you have arrived at um, your, your final goal or how you want to call it. And um, what's after that? So um, that also came with it. And it was also the only time on travels that six week in New Zealand that I wasn't working. And uh, <laughs> I also tried to... Um, kind of bring this into this but of course this is all not what the main video is about so i was just trying to give people before we head into it an idea of um what i was actually up to like like how arriving in new zealand felt to me and uh what what i was preparing myself for but also what i want the viewer to be prepared for and this is um pretty much the part here where we um after the voiceover changed into um, the montage. I mean, it's been a montage even up to that point, but where it's really just um, sound effects and every, everything happening all at once. Uh, so I wanted this to feel like the travel experience itself, right? When you arrive in a new country, usually, usually it's not like, okay, let's chill out and get used to the country, but it's, wow, everything is different. And look at this, look at that. Oh my God. And where are we going to head next? And you have this, this initial few days, sometimes weeks, where you're just very excited and you sometimes have even problems uh, keeping up in your memory what happened in what order. Uh, so I wanted to um, recreate that in that montage. And from there on out, I had to go back again to the script. Sometimes I just write it and it flows and I have everything done. In this case, I had to go back time and time again. And I wanted to revisit all these places that we went to, but I didn't want to make it obvious. I didn't want to say we went to Cape Branga and then we went to the South Island and uh, then we went to White Island, which is on the North Island, excuse me. Uh, that was not really in the right order, but um, I didn't want to call names. What I wanted to do though is um, make people curious on the one hand, like what are these places about? But on the other hand, um, maybe show off a bit that uh, when we were in New Zealand, we were not only visiting those places, but also trying to understand them. So one of those things is for instance, um, we went to a place where salts depart and oceans meet. That's Cape Branga, and I'm sorry if, I pro if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But um, so from what I remember and understand um, in the Maori mythology, it's um, a place where literally souls depart, like um, where they're on the last journey. And it's also a place where oceans meet. Now, I can't remember which oceans um, it are, but like the, the line you saw in the video that was kind of um, looking like waves crashing, those are literally two oceans. And I did that with um, 
different parts. Like for instance, we, we were watching a glacier disappear. That's um, Franz Joseph. Or we went to a lake that should not even be there, Tasman Lake, which is just, um, what, 40, 30 years old. Um, um, so I was, I was trying to refer to those places, but in a different way. And um, I, I, I do love this, by the way. By the way, I mean, it, it's one thing to hear a voiceover, but with all the giving context, you know, it's it, it's really cool to see the script, how you thought about putting these VO lines over that specific B-roll and then probably going back to that and seeing the meaning behind it just because, you know, like you said, two oceans meet a lake that's super recent. Um, I know we have our fellow Kiwi here, Steve, who may know geography pretty well. So let us know what line that may be where the two oceans meet, because I certainly don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe maybe Steve can give us some fun facts about that. But yeah, yeah, very cool stuff. Just want to call that out. So yeah, go on, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, uh, about geography and names, like these things, uh, if you're not um, confronted with them regularly, they just slip your mind at some point in time. Oh, yeah. But um, that's also what a project like this is great for. And I was speaking about it. Um, so the exciting part is what I sometimes do. I made, uh, I did something similar for a um, for a video about Austria. So. The time we were in Austria, I knew that I would not be able to um, restrain myself from shooting photos or videos. Like, that's not possible. It's beautiful. I have to get the camera and I have to capture it some way or another. But I didn't want to make a story out of it and I didn't want to pressure a story in it. So what I'm sometimes doing, like with this New Zealand video, is um, just really going through the whole journey we did and showing it off to other people. So that way, if you have footage sitting on your hard drive, which is painful, right? Um, you can still use it and make either just for yourself a piece out of it and um, kind of go back to those places, um, let yourself be taken back in the edit, but also in the finished video. And you can also do that with your friends or you can create something quote unquote uploadable for YouTube, right? And um, this is what I did, what, what like the main section, so, this part here is for. The first part really was mostly introduction, giving the viewers a feeling or, or translating my feeling, explaining how I felt. And the second part was to really immerse everyone into the experience. And I think one of the best ways definitely are sound effects. So I will mute the voiceover um, on top and maybe yeah, even the I music. Mean yeah, I want to, I mean, look at all those sound design clips, right? I mean, you're, yeah. you're very organized here. So it looks like all the B-roll and video track is on one layer. But look, we have about eight layers of sound design. And I'm going to go ahead and say that you should not sleep on sound design, right? No. I, you know, it's one thing to capture beautiful, beautiful moments. But I would say adding that sound design is what really separates that video from like cool to like, all right, this is a production professional video. And that's what you're doing here, right? Um, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty normal to just get sound effects from other sites just to build sound design. I mean, it's honestly a job in itself, just building sound design. But I'm telling you, it is that difference that is going to make a video really, really stand out in a professional sense. And that's very evident with about how much work you put in these sound design layers. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for bringing that up. Um, so definitely, um, if you if you're looking forward to um, take your video editing to the next level, it might seem counterintuitive to not work on the visuals, but sound design really is the way to go. Like sound design was a total game changer for me. Oh yeah, especially when you when you start layering those, right? Because it's one thing to put a ding ding in here or maybe a funny sound effect there. But if you try to really re recreate, a, um, how, how would you call it, the real sound? Um, the, the, I think there's there's a word for it. Um, sorry, not a native. Um, yeah, but when you when you layer sounds, this um, for me makes uh, totally makes sense because when you listen to your natural surroundings, those are not isolated or separate sounds, right? It's always right. a mixture. In this moment, I also hear a little bit of the, I hear Pablo, I hear a bit of the fan from uh, from the MacBook and also a bit uh, from the sounds outside. And that's also how you should approach sound design. And 100%. And just looking at the chat real quick, um, it looks like Steve did chime in. So I believe it's the <laughs> Tasman and Pacific Ocean. So the Tasman Sea and the Pacific that join together. Um, so thanks for calling that out. <laughs> and again, <laughs> thank if, you, Steve. If, yeah, thanks, Steve. And if anybody has any questions or has any comments or just wants to pop in the chat, go ahead and do it. We got 
Voitech for about another hour and a half here. So now's your chance to ask any questions that relate to video editing, shooting, sound design, all that. Um, so go ahead and chat. We'll relay any questions and it's going to be good stuff. This is a safe space. Claudie from Print My Soul is going to be on with us later on. Always says that this is a safe space to learn. So ask away because we're all here to learn together and we have a very cool person to teach us. So go ahead. Back to you. Looking forward to, uh, to uh, any questions coming up. Um, so what I would like to do is um, play the first bit, the first uh, minute or so for you, and then explain what I did with storytelling, because that's also, I had specific, uh, specific storytelling ideas in mind when creating this. Um, like I said, the main part really is about immersing the viewer, creating natural sound, but I will go ahead and explain this portion of the video um, after rewatching really, really just the beginning. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That sound um, design, that's on point, my friend. Good stuff. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, I did thank want to call everyone. out two things real quick that I noticed. Yeah. That I just, I have to know. First yeah, of all, cool. did we, did we witness a proposal there with your partner? Was that you getting on one knee? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Okay. I don't want to give yeah. away anything, but I was like, is there a teaser? Um, and also yeah. I noticed so uh, the New Zealand fern, I believe is the official uh, flower. Um, that was a really cool shot, by the way, where the, the fern, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Did you light that or was that just natural lighting? Cause it seems like there was a natural silhouette and that fern was just glowing. That was a really cool yeah. shot. I didn't notice that. Th that was natural lighting and that's just New Zealand. Nice. I mean, you've Great been capture. there. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's magical. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, all right, cool. All right, cool. Um, let's jump into the sounds. Um, so what I did is the first shots are really just, there's no story in this, right? That's just a collection of cool shots. And I wanted this to be an opener. I wanted to give the viewer a promise or the audience a promise on what I will show them. That's me inside a volcano. And um, this here is uh, Mount Cook. Like just, just some of the personally uh, me thinking nicest shots I have. And there's no sound if you pay attention to it there's no raw audio the only thing here is the music and that is even i love to use the essential sound panel by the way and i use this effect long uh, locked in a trunk so it's very dampened it's it's not like the actual clear audio from the music it's a part of it but i wanted it to be distant far away and the first real sound is the car and what I wanted to do with that is with the sound, 
now transition into the more natural world. And so I'm slowly adding some sound effects here. Here's the fern, and we have here the car again. And then we have um, some sounds of the natural environment. It's all very calm. And in the meantime, I sometimes like to um, disrupt the calm with hard audio cuts. So you can see here, I'm having audio fades. Here, I'm not doing that. I'm just cutting straight away to um, keep it a little bit more interesting. And you see, this here is all very calm and there are a few layers of audio, but it's not much. But then when we transition here into um, where the voiceover actually ends and where the montage begins, I really start to bulk it up. Like it's sound effects and sound effects and sound effects. Um, here's a nice one. I think that's like a, yeah, that that's kind of a wishy thing. Nice. And then again, we end with no sound. So we again transition here. I think that's a wave sound, if I'm right. A high whoosh. Yeah. And at the end of it, we got no sound again. We just have the piano hitting to um, those rays of the sun here. Bing, awesome. bing. So this is in its own story of itself. And um, I know that sometimes you do not create the stories um, intentionally. But I think if you do, you can use those sort of techniques or, or this approach with sound design to um, really enhance everything, to, to um, really give it more of that feel that you want to give it. Because if you're only using music, or, or rather, let me put it this way, if you're only using visuals, you're very limited. If you're using your voice or words and music, you're getting more out of it. If you're using music, you can definitely get a vibe to it. But if you also add natural sounds to it and play with how those sounds come across and how much of them are there, you have so much more control of influencing your edit and how your edit feels for the audience. 100%. Uh, real quick, I do want to jump on over to the chat and relay a few questions that were asked. We have one from Michael who is asking, I'd love to know how you color correct footage from all these different locations. I have a mm -hmm. hard time getting footage to look the same when the balance of colors is different from clip to clip. Yeah, um, so uh, I'll say something which, um, I don't know how people will feel about this, but I color correct every single clip, every clip. Um, I know sometimes it's easier to just wake, uh, make one adjustment and um, put that on an adjustment layer like I did. So the first one here is color correction. The first one is um, color grade, put a lot on it, and we're done. And that works if the footage is shot very good. In this case, yeah. like I said, I screwed up big time shooting this. So I had to correct it to um, just live up to my personal standards. And the way I do it is I use the uh, Lumetri color tab and um, just to go over the layers. So color correction is um, a correction lot. I um, also have for D. And um, then I do some adjustments that feel right for me. So I wanted it to be a bit warmer or I actually like over the edit, if I remember correctly, I start out cold and get warmer. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm lying to you. I'm sorry, that was a different edit. Uh, yeah, but I've brightened it up a bit at contrast. That's what I always do with my uh, Lumix footage, contrast, contrast, contrast. Um, I suck out highlights. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but I do that very often. Here it's just minus 15, but I can tell you, um, if we look at some of those clips, it will be like here, minus 75, just because I realized that I can gain so much detail back from the footage. Um, and um, usually I go a bit down with the shadows. So I don't know if this works for every footage, but um, this is something I do over and over again, and it just feels and looks right to me. Right. And yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it right. Um, I mean, to go off of that, I, you know, yeah. I would say the first thing is the more you get it right on camera, the easier your job's going to be. But yeah. that I would say that's pretty much how the the color. So there's two things. There's color grading and color correction, right? So it's pretty much yeah. how it goes. It's, you know, what Wojtek did is actually kind of what you do in the industry is if you have all these clips, you want to color correct them first. And what that means is kind of get like a base plate of even scopes, right? Like if you have the RGB parade up or you have your um, like waveform parade, you kind of want to just get this like sort of even base where all the footage 
has proper color correction and is lit well. And then after that, then you can go into color grade and then that's where you really start to give you a creative look. And it also just helps it make it look more uniform when you add that specific look. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks you, uh, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> um, I uh, actually also do use scopes. So um, I've uh, turned off the color grade and um, the color correction. Um, the color grade in this case really is um, just I've uh, wanted to um, not desaturate. How, how do you say that? Lighten up the shadows a bit, um, mm -hmm. make them, well, not muddy, but uh, I didn't want them to be black, black. I didn't want them to feel so dark and I have yeah, you a lifted lot. them up a little bit. Yeah, I lifted them. Thank you. That, that was the word I was searching for. And I have a lot here um, on 20%. So that's really all I did for the grade. Um, but when I color correct, I sometimes correct more intensely, sometimes less, like with this clip, but I do use the scope. So in the early days, I would eyeball it, um, which then turned out to be a problem because uh, my clips looked never the same and I never could get it right. Um, with the scopes, it's definitely easier. Um, one more rec recommendation I have is play with all the tools the Lumetri Color Tab gives you. So I tend to use sliders and I always tend to use um, numbers like 5, 10, 15, because I don't know, I have a thing. Um, but in the early days, I also did not know how to use um, the curves. Now I do. I do not always use them, but if I want to use them, I do. I also knew, know what um, hue versus set curve does and hue versus hue. And just familiarizing yourself with all those tools you have really gives you more flexibility. Um, in this specific case, I don't know if I have a clip that's really, really messed up, but sometimes you have that. Even today when I'm shooting, I forget to set the white balance correctly or um, the monitor I'm using does not have the lot applied. And then when I go into the edit, it all looks different. Knowing that I have all those different tools um, allows me to play around with it to the point where I can still get it right, where I can kind of save it. And I actually had that with a video in Lao where I um, set the white balance, like I was wearing um, sunglasses and I didn't see what I was capturing oh, on the no. monitor. <laughs> yeah, and I set the, on your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, and I set the white balance to um, I think fluorescent light, right? That's so um, yeah. no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, it's funny, um, but I'm sure it was a valuable lesson learned. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but with all those tools, I actually managed to correct it, and I had to really play around with it. Um, right. I know that. Um, so I don't know. Um, where you're standing with color correction personally or, or where each of you stand. But in the beginning, I remember I was watching all those videos, all those tutorials, and I didn't understand the thing. I, mm. I just I was just watching like, what are they doing? I don't understand this. There's gotta be an easy way. Crank up the contrast, crank up the saturation, done. And um, with time, just um, doing and doing it over and over again, you get better. So um, personally, I really think, and I love this question, um, because I had so many issues with color correction. Um, always approach it as um, a chance to learn, to get better at it, because right. that's literally how I learned it. Yeah, and I mean, as with anything that you're learning, even all the Adobe apps, right? I mean, you can watch all the videos and read all the books about it, but you're not going to really learn until you start applying yeah, them. Yeah, no. And then when you start applying that, then you start to learn what works, what doesn't. And you and I have actually a pretty similar way that we approached color correction because I always used to eyeball it, import LUTs <laughs> at 100%, and it's just like, oh, what? Right? And then the next game changer, the next level up, so to say, is understanding and learning scopes. And then once yeah. you really rely on those scopes, because again, color monitors, depending on your monitor, it's going to look different, but the scopes are true. They're true yeah. to the source. And if you stick to those and color correct and color grade off of those, you'll see your work is pretty consistent. Um, all right, I want to ask one more question and then we can jump back to the edit. Yeah, sure. We have a question from Hilla who is asking, are there any tips and tricks on how to adjust the lighting or fix it with light effects when you film in extreme weather? Mm, in post or, or shooting? Um, let's answer both, right? Yeah, let's um, answer both um, while she clarifies, but let's just give a quick answer for both. Yeah. Uh, we have one. Uh, when shooting, um, 
and ND, especially for video, is the way to go. Like, um, I did not use NDs until last year, and now that I have one, I don't want to ever go out without one. Um, so, yeah, sometimes that happens, then I need to drive back because without it, it doesn't work. Especially if you get those better light sensitive lenses, you cannot shoot at 2.8 or 1.8 or even 1.4 without an ND outside. It doesn't work. So DND really helps you control that. And um, on top of that, when you're shooting a log profile, like we mentioned, really gives you the ability to not only um, regain the highlights, but also regain a lot of detail from the shadows. So those two right. things when shooting um, are crucial. In post, I would say um, what I always do is, hmm, it would be cool if I, if I oh, this might actually um, work well to explain things a bit. Um, yeah, so sometimes, oh, you see, so sometimes I also correct in the source and in um, the actual file and the timeline to get different effects across uh, across the edit. Um, let's do this. If I put this to zero, you see how it's brightening all up. And um, manipulating the highlights, I can get a lot of detail back. But what is right. the actual game changer and what I realized way, way too late is um, using the whites. You will just see in a sec um, how the scopes, let me change that um, quickly, um, how the specs will go through the roof with the whites and um, how we're losing a lot of detail here. And I knew that um, if I was shooting with the Lumix G85, it was always minus 35 with the whites that I would regain um, the most highlights I can. So those are the things I do to um, kind of counter extreme weather conditions. Um, but sometimes you may just have a bad day. Um, and what, you, what you can do then is try to um, use this creatively. Um, so I was speaking um, earlier of, of a retro filter. Um, that's a thing you can always do. Uh, but uh, so I'm, I'm trying to think of extreme weather conditions other than rain. Um, what you can do with rain when you have extreme weather conditions is um, add sounds like that helps a lot because um, it's distracting a bit from, from the image. And um, in video, um, it's not really a saying or a proverb or anything, but like everybody knows pretty much that um, you can save a film with good audio, but um, you not necessarily need the most awesome visuals. The other way around, terrible audio, good visuals, doesn't really work. Right. Does that yeah, help? I, I hope. It does. Yeah, I think it does. Um, I think when you're out shooting, Hello, your best friend are ND filters. I mean, again, that's another thing that I learned the hard way when I was first shooting, but it's, you, you got to shoot with an ND filter outside if you want those beautiful shallow depths of field, right? I mean, maybe you don't and that's fine. You can just stop it down, but it's all really personal preference. But if you can get it um, right in camera and save those highlights, then ND filters are definitely going to help you with that. Um, okay. Let's jump back into it. Cause we, wow. I love the questions. We're really, really yeah, good th things going here. So yeah, um, keep the questions coming. But in the meantime, I'm going to let Wojtek work a little more because we are halfway through the stream. We have about an hour ago, but let's get some work done. And then I'll ask another Ooh. round of questions. Okay. Time, time goes fast. Yeah. Um, so let's go and do the social edits then, or let me explain how I approach them. Um, you can see here we... Um, so I have one tab, one timeline with a teaser that I used for Instagram in horizontal and one 9 to 16 teaser, actually two that I used for the story. So um, because my, my main focus is YouTube, I put more of the work into creating um, a longer form video. So not it's not really a feature film, of course, but um, those five to 10 to 15, maybe 20 minute videos, that's where I put my focus on. And social cards really are just there to promote it for me. If I would be a social creator first, like an Instagram or TikTok creator first, I would flip it. I would put most of the time into creating those videos. Um, so a way I approach this is, my first minute of the video, sometimes the first 30 seconds, are meant to be the teaser for my social accounts. Um, so 
with the script in mind, with everything in mind, I create something in the beginning that's um, captivating, that's drawing the audience in. And that's pretty much perfect for what I want to show in social. And sometimes I then just switch um, single uh, single visuals out to um, give the viewer really the best shots, which is a fun thing because when I started out, I was always like, um, I cannot show my beautiful shots. I, I, I cannot show my first shots in the first 30 seconds. And that's exactly wrong. You got to show what you have as early as you, you can. capture and, them. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to show them two in the or three nose. seconds to grab them on social media. There's endless, endless content out there and you got to get them. You got to yeah. get them quick. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be selfish. Don't keep it. For, don't keep them for you. Um, put them out there and put them out quick. It's like good journalism. Um, you need to make clear what this is about and why it's worth reading in the first paragraphs. And um, I could replay this teaser um, which would really just be seeing what you've already saw. Like this is the first minute with um, a few of those visuals. And maybe just would show you how I'm ending it. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. Um, we have this whole, whole montage and what you actually end, want to. That whole freedom thing, I seem to got it wrong. It was about time to get it right. Excuse me. So what I did is I have a riser, razor, not sure how you pronounce it right, at the very end. And um, hopefully if people watch this video, they feel like I want to watch more, but I'm, then I'm ending it abruptly. So right. that hopefully they um, go to the link in the bio and they watch the full video. That's, you left that's them the on a cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty they much. want more. So, yeah, so we already have this teaser, right? Um, but let's create another one. I've created this one, like I said, from the first minute. And I thought it would be a cool thing to um, do this with another part of the video, like with um, this montage where there's actually no voiceover, where I'm really just having a bit of fun with the visuals. Um, so let's do that. And for this, I'm gonna copy the sequence because I'm paranoid and I'm always scared to lose or delete things. And we call this teaser V.2. I'm gonna delete everything in here, go back. And yeah, I actually could have duplicated this timeline. And um, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but I've just um, selected everything and now I'm importing everything. And what I want to do is um, get rid of the main part because we're not going to use this one, right? And let me have a look where, right, right about here, the montage is ending. So um, I'm cutting my layers up there. And what was this? Cool. Um, good I took a look on that because that's the actual music audio and I saw I cut in the wrong place. So that was helpful, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> good thing to double check. Yeah, um, oh, always. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit chaotic. So when you look at this part of um, the edit, it's very organized. Back in oh, the yeah. days, it wasn't. And um, I'm probably not the first person to stress this, but um, really keep your project organized because it's yeah. not fun if you like today, like um, just imagine Adobe um, gives you a call or, or um, shout, uh, sends you an email asking for a life and you, um, your, your projects are all messed up and you cannot find anything and all the media is not relating to you. You don't want that to happen to you, right? So um, keep everything nice and organized. Um, That's another one of those level up moments, right? It's, it's, I'd say organization with project folders. Cause especially with video, there's so many assets, yeah. file types, sequences, adjustment layers. Oh man, the list goes on. But the more you organize it in the project and even in your computer mm -hmm. desktop, like the finder or the windows Explorer, the easier your life's going to be. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that in the long term saves you a lot of time, like shortcuts. I was always too lazy to learn shortcuts. Now that I have them, I don't want to miss them ever again. Oh yeah. And um, what I will also say is that now it's looking organized because it was super easy to clean it up. Um, but 
my personal biggest purpose of organizing my projects in the beginning is that I can get messy with time. Because if I get messy with time, I can still um, clean everything up quite quickly. But if I don't have an order prior to that, and if I don't have like a general system to how I approach my edit, it will always be messy. I'm always going to lose stuff. Um, there are a lot of great features in Premiere, like um, to reveal certain clips in the Finder that can help. But um, you're never going to be as effective and as fast if you um, get your stuff organized. And that's coming from a very chaotic, unorganized guy. <laughs> right. All right, boy. Well, it's like I do have a new round of questions that I'm going to ask you. Are you ready for them? So we got about three. Let's go. Maybe we can give some quick answers. All right. Barbara's asking, can you estimate how much time it took for you to do all the work to get the finished mm -hmm. product? Ooh, um, Barbara, was it right? Um, Barbara. Thanks so Thanks so much for the question. Um, it's a bit hard to assess. So um, I was also um, doing like day job client work um, in the meantime. So it took a bit longer. But I think um, sorting out all the footage um, definitely took a whole day. And then sorting mm -hmm. out um, the, the final select um, that I showed you took another day. And the whole edit, I think it took me about two weeks of, of not very... Um, like I was not working on it daily, but from time to time, which kind of stretches out the whole process. But I think it's doable within a week. And I say um, there are some some moments or, or some um, some scenes in the timeline that I wanted to feel perfect for myself because perfectionism is always subjective, right? Um, so that might have taken a bit longer, but those are also the moments that you um, only see in hindsight where you like, if I could travel back in time, I would probably slap myself and tell myself to go on. It's not that important. Um, but yeah, I think all in all a week and a half or something a week, like that, that should be about it because nice. um, yeah, because like I said, this one was a puzzle, right? There was no plan to it. I didn't know I would create this one day. So um, this is also, um, it's also the worst possible edit you can have i think it's worse than having a plan and having screwed something up like having no plan is always <laughs> going to make things difficult for sure all right asking the next one uh dr jekyllin hyde i think i'm saying that right uh is asking how do you plan your use of music mm, good question um i don't <laughs> Um, unfortunately um, music is not one of my best talents i'm trying to understand music more um, but I don't have a good feeling for it. Um, so the only thing I really can do is trial and error, just um, see what music works. Of course, I have some kind of music in mind and some kind of journey I want to have with the music. Like in this case, we have this um, kind of epic sounding track in the beginning, which I didn't want to be too epic. I didn't want a lot of the rings feel, but it should also be a bit um, electronic or rocky, if that makes any sense. Um, and then the second part, I would just wanted ambience music to um, not interfere with the natural sounds or the artificial sounds, actually the sound design. Um, yeah, but um, sometimes I just got to figure it out in the edit. Like there's a different project. Um, if, if I'm going to be too quick with this one, we maybe can take a look at it. Um, but there's a film I made um, that's called uh, Taking One Year Off, um, where I, in the edit, just got the idea for how the music is supposed to be. So um, I sometimes have a track in mind before starting the edit, but usually I figure it out in the edit um, because when I see the visuals, I and when I when I have the script, I have a better feeling for myself just how I want it to feel. Like does does that make any sense? It does. Yeah, and it, it's very funny because that's actually how I do edits as well. Um, a lot of times I'll I'll collect the footage, I'll put them in a rough cut. Um, it depends if it's a personal or client project, but once I see the project, kind of a rough cut of it, then I'll select a song that I think kind of goes mm -hmm. with the flow and the energy of it. And yeah. a lot of times that song will actually influence the edit. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, I don't, I don't plan to use the song when I start to shoot. I just kind of see what, how it all works. And then I kind of get a vibe what's working and then mm -hmm. I'll pick a song that kind of fits that if that makes sense. Yeah, and I would say I would say though that it also depends on how personal this project is for you. If it's just oh, a yeah. fun edit, something you want to finish quickly, you might end up with music that works, right? You mm -hmm. you have a track in mind, you you know how the energy in the edit feels like. Um, you put some dubstep underneath or whatever whatever you prefer, uh, and it's good. But if it's a personal project and you want to feel it a certain way, 
you might look for music a bit longer because sometimes i think right. like oh i think like um so i don't know how it's called like um i like those synthy musics that um uh, rise with time uh, johnny harris is using a lot of those um and i like those but sometimes i think like oh that would fit perfectly but when i put it underneath it doesn't it still works somehow but i'm not satisfied with it so i keep on searching until i find something that actually works nice Great answer. All right, we have two more questions that I'm gonna take real quick and then we'll go right back to the edit. Yeah, okay? lovely. Uh, Mahmoud is asking, I started learning Premiere six months, but I don't know what the next step is. How can I have a job and what about After Effects? Um, all right, so what I'll say Mahmoud is start to learn and do video that you are interested in, okay? Because you wanna start to do the things that you wanna get hired for more or less. So I would say just do personal videos, right? You're not getting paid to do this. If you have another job, great. Don't do anything with that job until you feel comfortable with this other uh, skill that you're learning. So just do personal work that gets you excited and gets you amped for the type of work that you're doing. And then once you've done more of those and you're very satisfied with what it is, start sharing them, right? Put them on a website, put them on an Instagram, just get that work out there, right? Put it on a LinkedIn. And then once potential people that may want to be looking for a videographer start to see your work, right? That's work that you want to do. And they'll come looking for you based on that type of work, because that's this type of stuff that you're known for. And you're known for that work because it's the type of work that you want to do. So I'd say take a baby steps, right? Um, these streams help a lot. You know, you're learning, just learn all those things, watch all the videos. But again, none of that is going to matter unless you start going out and shooting and editing, right? If you don't want to shoot and you just want to edit, great, get some video and just edit it, but edit the things that you want to do and share that. So that way people know that this is your style and you could potentially get hired for that. Um, and then After Effects, After Effects is a whole another ball game, right? But After Effects I think is that bridge that can really amp up your production value, but it can be overwhelming. So I'd say start with one thing first, you know, really get a grasp of Premiere first and you'll start to see that maybe the things that you want to do in Premiere, you can't, so you have to go to After Effects, although these days you can do a lot in Premiere. So take it one step at a time and see what type of edits you want and then maybe make that bridge between After Effects and Premiere if you think you do need it. Um, and then lastly, Fairy's asking what type, of what type of camera I shoot with photography. I'm still using the old tank, tried and true, the 5D Mark III. So if I'm gonna do a photography trip, I'll bring my camera, the 5D3. If I'm gonna do a video trip, I actually shoot with the GH5. Um, cool, right on. That was like a rapid fire question round. Bam, bam, bam. So, bam, bam, bam. Cool. So let's get back into it because um, we are we are losing time. So we'll we'll get a little bit more work done with this mm -hmm. edit, and then I'll I'll jot questions down if there are any, and then we'll pause and ask and ask more questions. All right. So back to you, Wojtek. Cool, cool, cool. And I also think you just gave the um, perfect advice, and you basically described my journey with Premiere and working in the creative field. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, I just deactivated the uh, color grade and color correction because we won't need those to um, re just rearrange the edit. And so what I want to do in the beginning is um, see what parts of the voiceover I want to use for the social cut. So I think the beginning. Okay, cool. I just muted it instead of soloing it. There we go. Traveling has never been an escape for me. I've said that. Okay, and like I said in the beginning, I um, formerly only had those two lines. So I think I'm gonna use those. Traveling has never been an escape for me until I realized how badly I needed one. Cool. And then we have everything I'm saying here, but that's all too much for the social edit because we have this whole montage that's very music heavy. And um, there, so there's no space for the voiceover. Um, Freedom thing. But we kind of need need a segue to, uh, in, into the montage that at least for my feeling makes sense. That whole freedom thing. I seem to got that wrong. It was about time to get it right. Okay, I think this will work. Cool, I'm gonna delete those and put those together. And let's see um, how much time those actually take up. So um, what I sometimes do to just check real quick how much time something takes up is to mark those with I and O and then look up here, it's 20 seconds. Okay, that's 20 seconds from one minute. Mm. 
and the whole montage I think also takes up about a minute. So maybe uh, I should trim this down even further. Traveling has never been an escape for me. I realized how badly I needed one. Okay, so I think I'll just go with the two first sentences because it will work for what I want to create. I really want to put emphasis on the montage. Yeah. And um, what I want to do from here on out is um, see if it works when I just use the music like I used it in the in the edit itself with a little fade maybe. Um, so that means that we would basically begin around here. Oh, sorry. Traveling has never been an escape for me. Okay, that doesn't work perfectly, but I think I can get it to work because that's literally the same portion I used here in the very beginning. So it should work. Let's see how all that sounds. If I extend that audio fade, I'm really messy with those audio fades. Like, um, I don't know if sound designers really like doing those, but um, I just like them for simplicity's sake. Traveling has never been an escape for me. Yeah, that, that kind of works for me. Yeah, um, good. Tune that down a bit. By uh, five dB. Mm, okay, and so it's about the first visuals were seen, right? Um, because I'm saying something, and we're seeing the very first visuals. And like I said, I want those to um, capture the attention of the audience. I personally like this one. I mean, it's the back of my head. It's not my face, um, and I think we could argue if that's rather interesting or not. But um, it's a person. It's a silhouette, and um, the human. I, or rather the actually the, the human brain is attracted to other human forms. So if you have a silhouette or a face, that's always gonna capture attention. So that's cool for a first visual. Um, then we have me on a mountain. Then we have um, something that's that's quite unrelated to the rest we're seeing. So um, I think I'm gonna replace those three with something else. And like I said, I'm paranoid, so I'm not gonna delete them right away. Um, even though the dolphin is cool, but I think you don't don't see the dolphin long enough to really grasp what it is, and you should if you want to actually capture attention. So this visual is returning later on, and this is literally like I would do it if I would create um, a social cut. I go back through the visuals I have already gathered in the intro scene because I know that I've already selected those having in mind that they're there or that they're either beautiful or um, attention grabbing. And um, I really like this one um, personally from um, White Island. Uh, actually, um, Steve, um, if, if you're there still, uh, I have a question for you. I have a lot of footage from White Island and there was this incident at the end of 2019. So it is kind of a hot topic. And I'm really interested if it would be insensitive to actually make a video about it um, and like how we went there. Uh, yeah, maybe if, that's if, an... if Steve's still watching, maybe you can chime in and let us know if it's if it works, or maybe it's a little too sensitive. But let us know, Steve, if you're there. It would definitely be cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we got that scene. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this one. So um, you see me <laughs> literally selecting. Um, okay. I could also. Just copy and paste those, right? Um, literally selecting the first visuals I had in my timeline, which um, kind of makes sense because um, I'm doing here the exact same thing I'm doing with the whole edit, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, my, my voice is uh, slowly saying goodbye. Oh, it's he never been an escape for me. I have, I have. Actually, let me take a quick, yeah, quick sip. water break. It's a good idea. Really Thank you for reminding me. Back. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Got to stay hydrated. We're talking for three hours. <laughs> you do. <laughs> uh, before we jump back, I do want to change the uh, audio setting real quick. It'll take two seconds. So do me a favor, go to Premiere Pro up top. Yeah. And then go to Preferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's go to Audio. Yeah, and there's a little check mark that says Play Audio While Scrubbing. Let's just uncheck that so we're not hearing little yeah. pitches when we're scrubbing. Okay, cool. Makes awesome. sense. Definitely. 
Yeah, I personally kind of like it because it helps me to um, orientate myself. Where I mm-hmm. where am I in the edit? It, it may, maybe that's weird, but uh, that's just how my brain works. Yeah, I think I do it too, editing. But for the purpose <laughs> of live streaming, we'll just turn it off to save our viewers' ears. Totally makes sense. Yeah, fair saying. PSA, drink water, save your work, and stretch your wrist. Very, very good things. Speaking of water, I'm going to do that too. Stretching your wrists. Okay, cool. Um, so I replaced those clips. Just put them on top to see um, if that works. And uh, yeah, let's, let's have a look. If... Traveling has never been an escape for me. Mm. Until I read. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, so it would work, but again, um, to uh, back to what I was saying earlier, um, it's a personal project, so I want the things to make a bit more sense. So, for instance, I don't like it um, changing in between me, cat, me, like cat, my partner, and um, maybe this makes more sense. So, if we have like most people would probably not even notice that this is cat and not someone else, but I do. So, uh, I'm kind of biased here. Let's just maybe change those. Maybe that flows a bit better. Cool. And for those Back of you that are just joining, just a quick recap on what's going on is we watched this beautiful, beautiful, amazing cinematic video that Wojtek did while he was in New Zealand. And right now we're just cutting a version of that to be social friendly. So we're taking that nine minute video and cutting it down to, um, I don't know, what's the desired length? Will we say like a minute or two, 30 seconds? What's the A minute. Here? And um, if I'm real quick, I think we can also create a 15 or 30 second for, um, for Instagram stories. Cool. Yeah. So the point Shuttling is we want to get a short version and bring them back so they can watch the whole thing. Um, all right. I'll stop talking. Go ahead and play the video. Yeah. No, sorry. Sorry. That was me. I was kind of impatient here. Uh, no, oh, no, boy. Good. Okay. There we go. That's our starting point. Traveling has never been an escape for me. Until that I felt right. So yeah, it's looking good. For the sake of moving on, I will say, I will take this as it is. And um, really the benefit of, of this, um, like I said, of planning my um, longer form videos, um, the way that I can reuse them or reuse the, the beginning of those videos or sometimes a midsection um, for social cuts is that I can also reuse all those sound effects. Just imagine, how stressful it would be to create that from scratch or how sad it would be to leave out all those sound effects because I tell myself, well, I don't really want to do this for the social edit. And it would also be sad for the viewers to, to not have that experience, right? So um, I think that's just a very good way to approach it. Until I realized how badly I needed one. Okay. Um, so what I want to do now is um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, the montage is just for fun. There's no story in there. And there are a few scenes I put in there because I did not know where to put them out, but I wanted them to be in the film. And also I have one or two sequences I just put in there to um, kind of make my life easier. And I want to search now for moments I could replace with potentially better footage that if people um, watch the social cut, they have not seen the earlier footage, right? So I can definitely do it like from the first minute because the montage is the second minute. And so I'm really going to go through this one by one and maybe explain a little bit what, I, what my thought process was. This is um, Roy's Peak, the famous Instagram spot. And um, this Zoom was not created in post. That, that was um, in camera. And um, I tried to, <laughs> so one thing I um, was doing for a long time, I was forgetting to film myself, like my own face. And it would always be cat in there. And it, it's kind of weird when you have a film where, where there is a female and a male is always talking as a voiceover that, that does not necessarily, well, it works, but um, I was kind of asking myself in my own edits, where is the guy? Where am I? Where is the actual voice that is saying this? Is it her? Um, you don't know. So um, in New Zealand, I was um, trying to film myself a bit more and also bring this into the edit so that people see who's actually speaking with them. That also helps the audience um, kind of 
identify the person and with that person um, identify oneself really with it, if, if that makes any sense. Okay. It does. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's sort of visual context, right? I mean, it, mm -hmm. you're right. If there's a male VO and it's a female throughout the whole thing, it's kind of like a weird mismatch, but you know, if you give it context where like, mm -hmm. Oh, Hey, it's actually a male that's filming, then the voiceover I think makes a little more sense. Mm -hmm. I actually want to show you guys something. So I um, spoke earlier about this that I sometimes do like here, hard audio cuts. And um, if you look at this, um, these are all the same sound effect, but um, if you uh, look at the time code, you see that it's different portions I selected. And so they sound very differently. And so what I'm doing is on the one hand, I'm editing to the beat, but sometimes I want to mix it up with sound and disrupt that. So um, just to play it back really quickly um, to give you a feeling of how that can sound. Or uh, maybe let's do it without music. Yeah. Yeah. I say, which is the sound we're keeping an eye out? <laughs> or sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that that was a lot. Like the music is very loud, but um, that was also on purpose. So then phases on the music. But um, if we play this uh, without music, it still works. which leads me to another sound effect that um, might be interesting. So sometimes you might be looking for a very specific sound that you have in your ear, but you don't know how to articulate it. So that was, um, for me in the beginning, that was always the case. Um, I'm not an English native. Um, all the English I have learned is from watching movies and series and um, getting into conversations. So um, I didn't know what a rise is, what a whoosh is. So I was just randomly typing in stuff and um, learning with time what I need to search for. Um, and one of those sounds is the, the, is the sound of a lens flare, which isn't there because lens flares don't do sounds, right? The sound of a lens flare. I wouldn't even know how to search for something like that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can find it luckily with flares. Sometimes it's there in um, with something like crystal or something or yeah. glow. Oh, okay. I think like yeah. the, the glistening sound. I guess if glistening yeah. has a sound, that's what... Yeah. Would, would emulate interesting okay but, I, I see but what, again. Is, what what is that actually is it, is it like a chime gene uh, you pronounce the, it right? well it depends what's what's the what's the sound effect i'm very curious but, to know what yeah like a about flare so, sound is yeah so i have this one um okay or let me maybe yeah it's kind of like a, chime, a bit louder like a, yeah um, and there's a funny thing about that. So um, this sound effect actually is uh, two sound effects. Um, let me search quickly for it. There we go. Flare glare sound. And I've rendered it out. Um, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like this glistening sound effect, you know. I, I understand. Okay, yeah. I get it now how it could be like a yeah. lens flare sound as well. Yeah, but that, that's a great point. Uh, you know, English is in your native language. Mm. And I mean, I would say even me personally, it's like, how do you describe like that whip pan or that zoom? Yeah, uh, so I can see it's sound? even harder as a non-native speaker to even search for that. Um, so yeah. kudos for even finding those things. And it also, it also blows my mind that um, I, I actually meet a lot of expats or people like from other foreign countries where English is in their native language where they just learn the language through watching TV with subtitles or movies. And I'm just like, Man, only of us Americans can learn that easily. <laughs> you know, yeah, thank you. It's it's very impressive. And Ferry also said that says he learns his he learned in school his grammar, but it's still mad. But also Ferry is here as a non native mm -hmm. English speaker, speaking English really, really well and taking part in the conversation. So again, I I commend you all who don't speak English as a native speaker, but here you are doing live streams or chat and it's it's very impressive. Yeah, and I, I mean it's also opening up you to the um it opened on the one hand, it opens up the world to you, but right. you are also opening up to the world by learning a different language. So um, I definitely sure. do want to visit one day um, South America, but I don't want to get there without getting more into um, Spanish. Like, yeah, that's very um, respectable. Yeah, I also heard from other people that um, the one thing they were sad about missing out when they were visiting South America was not being able to connect more with the people. And um, mm. yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's important. Um, just real quickly back to the sound effect. Uh, I just want to explain that 
Mm, if you don't find the perfect sound effect, you sometimes can manipulate them and create your own, like I did with this one. So formally, I had this one and I reversed it. And I've also speeded it up to 500%. So if we play that back at 100%, it sounds more like this. Check that out. That's very cool. Very cool. And we ended, yeah. And we ended up with this here, which um, I think, oh, excuse me, teaser two was it, um, really works for uh, the purpose of it. Like we have those glares here. Nice. And those sounds also help um, transition. So um, like I mentioned earlier, mm, those sounds, um, because the music is so loud, you don't, you cannot hear them clearly, um, but they, I personally think they help um, influence the mood and uh, the whole feeling of the film subconsciously because you, you actually hear them. You may not hear them consciously, but um, on a subconscious level, it's still working. So we got one minute four, and I will definitely need to um, shorten that one up a bit. Yeah, but so far I really like most of those visuals. It's looking good. We have some new friends joining in the chat. Shraddha, hello, oh, cool. welcome. Um, quick time welcome, check, we have about 30 guys. minutes Hi. left. Yep. Welcome. Welcome. So we have about 30 minutes left. Um, if there are any last minute questions that you want to ask us, I'm going ahead and jotting them down so we can answer them at a, at a good pausing break so we can let Wojtek do his thing, but feel free to chat away. Again, this is a safe space learning opportunity. So ask us any video related questions that you may have and I'll relay Definitely. to Wojtek uh, when we have some time. But in the meantime, Wojtek, we do have about 30 minutes left. So just a heads up. Cool. Thanks so much, Pablo. And um, yeah, I think we're almost done. That actually went way faster than I thought it would do. But um, like I said, um, just thanks to um, planning this out beforehand or, or um, really organizing it the way I did, there isn't so much I need to change. Like basically everything I need to do from this point on is um, shorten it a bit. And that's very, very, for me, um, satisfying and enjoyable knowing that I don't want to spend a whole day on a social cut. So um, I can get this done really quickly and then again, focus on other projects um, or projects that um, really demand more time. Okay, so we got one minute four. And um, what I will need to do is, um, like I said, music is not my biggest talent. So I will need to um, listen a bit to the music and see where I can um, maybe put a cut. Hey, that's a problem. I kind of like what I did here. <laughs> that's a great song, by the way. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. Uh, we we do have a quick question. Yeah, uh, and you sure. might have, you might have covered this in the intro, so maybe it can be a quick answer. Uh, did you storyboard this video, or was it just a script, or did you just wing it? Um, just a script. Just just a script. Um, I usually and I think never you showed us it. that, right? Yeah. You, didn't you have a script can... that you were showing us? Yeah, there yeah. you go. So. This is my script. Um, I've, I've mentioned this in the beginning. I um, started with only those two lines. Traveling has never been an escape for me until I realized how badly I needed one. That line stayed with me for two years, but I've luckily also noted it down. And then I've extended that a bit. And um, just really um, the first part, explaining where I was when we reached New Zealand. And then um, to, oopsie, um, then to sum this up, Real, real quickly um, in the main part, which is this section, I went about the places we visited, but I would not call them out by name, but rather describe them or mention what makes them special. Um, and this was the only thing I was working with. It really was a puzzle to um, give you a, an idea of how it might look when I plan something out. It's something like oh. this year. So it's not really a storyboard, but um, 
here I've created a script and then I thought what I want the visuals to look like and I wrote them down um, and they're crossed out since I've already shot them, like wide shot, extreme close-up. Um, it, and it does not always work out perfectly. So some usually I will overshoot, which is a good thing. Um, but um, this year is a whole different process. And here I've spent way more time in the scripting phase and it came way more easily together in the editing process. So in editing, I just really had to put the things together like almost um, like almost working with construction manual, right? And then just um, see how uh, to put the sauce on it, like uh, Peter McKinnon would say, um, how, how to make it special or, or how to maybe correct some mistakes I, I did not see coming. And I use some color markers to um, distinguish certain kinds of footage, um, B-roll, A-roll, but I also had some old footage. This is coming back footage. So this is the alternative, how an alternative script to this might look like. But that's that's usually the process because I'm messy and I kind of sleep on planning sometimes, but I try to get better at it. And I like writing, nice. so um, scripts yeah, I think always that's another. I think that's another one of those level up moments, right? Is, you know, when you're first shooting or just shooting for the sake of shooting, but when you want to make a story, when you start writing it down and giving it a treatment or mm -hmm. a script, then that's when the production really starts to come together a lot more easily. And you're able to tell a more defined story because you're shooting mm -hmm. with an idea already in mind. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, some people might underestimate um, scripting or writing, but it's actually hard, I think. And I don't know why, why I got a tendency to write in English. I, I like it for some reason. Maybe I also suck at it. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I enjoy it, actually. I really enjoy the English language and what you can do with it, because um, you very often can um, put things very simply and still give a meaning to them. And uh, yeah, getting, getting a better writer can definitely also make you a better filmmaker. So um, I've gone a bit back and forth, and that's um, about three seconds. So the perfect length of what I actually want to cut out. Um, what visuals do we have here? Car, 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 car. Hmm. I like those match cuts, by the way. I noticed that it's it's perfectly yeah. framed, and it's it's a great match cut. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Um, match cuts are something I rely on heavily. Um, also because my editing style is very straightforward. I like hard cuts. I don't do too many effects. Sometimes I do them, but only um, if, if uh, they help the edit. Uh, so, um, and match cuts are just something that feels very nice, you know, having about the same situation. And I mean, of course it's perfectly when a match cut matches perfectly, that's super satisfying. But for some reason, I found that when it matches too perfectly, it sometimes feels off, like just the background changed or something. So um, sometimes having a little bit of wiggle room like I have in here feels almost more natural, but maybe that's just me. So let's see how this comes together when I bring this together. And I'm really just, um, that's really just, Testing the music. Nope, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Cool, so maybe we go a different route do a cut here and um, what I'm doing just to explain it is um, I'm looking for those hits that you <laughs> hits <laughs> that you uh, see here in the audio timeline uh, maybe it makes sense to make this one a little bit bigger oh okay so I made the top one smaller sorry and I'm looking for these kind of hits here and to cut there straight away so um, a guy I worked with um, whose approaches, like the majority of them, I did not like them, but he told me when I cut audio to cut it straight and to fit it in perfectly. And it's not always easy, but I find a lot of value in that because it somehow sounds cleaner than just putting an audio fade. And that's cheating, which I maybe will do in a second, but um, yeah, that's, that's um, like I said earlier with color grading, it's a challenge you can put your stuff up to and um, like Pablo put it, really level up. Uh, it's Paco, but oh, Paco. Yes, oh excuse lovely. me, <laughs> that's all good. Did I? You mentioned Pablo. I'm like, I think we have a Pablo uh, in the I'm chat. So we sorry. know, but no, no, it's all good. 
Oh uh, man, I'm so sorry. I apologize. No, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm starting to sweat right now. So, so uncomfortable. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not putting you on the spot. It's all good. Man. Okay, that kind of worked, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a really cool comment from the chat. Um, so Dr. Jekyll and Hyde is saying, uh, he's calling out a play or one of the sentences that you wrote in the script it says, we went to mm -hmm. a place where souls to pardon oceans meet. So he quoted mm -hmm. that and he says, you have a rider soul. Trust me. Oh, oh my God. Thank Agreed. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very cool stuff. Such a lovely comment. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm still blown away by the comment, but I don't like what is happening with the audio here. I, um, trying to get it right, but maybe. So, so what are we trying to do here? What, what's the goal right now with this, with this um, edit that we're in? I'm literally trying to get it four seconds shorter and I think I'm just stressing it too much. So um, we're gonna delete that. And see that that's really good if um, someone else is editing with you. Like just just uh, um, just you asking me what are you actually doing um, mm. got me thinking. Like maybe I'm overthinking it actually. So, um, oops. So we're That's trying to make word. the the song just four seconds shorter so it matches with the length. Yeah. Correct. Got yeah. It. So I have one minute and I po can post it on Instagram, not as IGTV, okay. um, which ideally should be longer, but. Um, uh, yeah, also not 30 seconds long or anything. So I, I don't want to shorten it too much and give really people as much of the experience as they can. Because I always think like, if people don't want to watch it on YouTube, sometimes people have those preferences. I cannot force them. But what I can do is give them as much as I can on Instagram. What I, on the other hand, wouldn't do is post a 10 minute video on IGTV, just because I personally think um, it's it's not, I don't know. Maybe that's just personal preference. I'll just stop right there. <laughs> okay, um, let's see how that works. Yeah. Yeah, no, this works. I think this really works. I think that the cuts, as you hear that sound effect, that's sort of a ramping sound effect, right? It's kind of like bringing the tension up and you have like the faster yeah. cuts with the match cuts and then it goes to more of the serene calm ones with the mm -hmm. ocean and the bird i think this is looking really good thank you um yeah i also think this works so um i will not go through the whole color grading process because we already did it i could do mm -hmm. so um if you would like to see that we can um, definitely do and try that um just the thing i mentioned briefly earlier that i sometimes do and that was a huge game changer for me is the source option in um, lumetri color so um right here this is the clip um and i'm using my finger to point at it that was smart <laughs> um this is the clip um that you're seeing here in the timeline and I sometimes correct those if I want a clip I've used twice or three times in the same timeline to look different. But if I'm using footage from a clip or different parts of that footage across the timeline, and I always want to look at the exact same, I can go to source um, where I can um, apply my, uh, my, my changes or, or my um, color correction, my color grading. And it will take those and, or it will, use this as a master clip and um, put those changes, this color grading to every other clip in the timeline or every clip that I use. So um, this is also why I could um, delete some of those um, color correction options I did. Right. And I would just basically still end up having a good image because I changed it in the source part. Yeah, and you could usually tell because there's a little red line underneath that FX mm -hmm. tab. Um, yeah, and that lets right. you know that the, the effects were applied to the source um, and not just the clip on the timeline. So cool thing to know. Yeah. Um, and while I have you, I'm going to ask a exactly. quick question. Yeah. Um, Todd is asking, what do you do when a person speaking is thumping the table as they emphasize the words as they speak and it's in every clip you have? Ouch. That is quite the issue, my friend. Um, any tips or tricks to clean that up? So let's say I'm talking and I keep thumping, right? And then now, unfortunately, that mm. is now recorded into the audio. 
what would you do to remove that if you could? Me personally, um, if if you're able to do it, I would cut it out. I think there are options in um, Adobe Audition where you cl can clean it up quite nicely. Um, I'm not too much of an Audition guy. And um, I don't know, maybe the day will come, but I'm rather looking to um, get a bit more, um, I'll get better with After Effects. Another thing I would do or try is um, get into the um, Essential Sound panel um, and then at Repair. Um, first, I'll try to reduce noise. And um, I wouldn't take this to like um, five, but something like 0 0.5, 0 0.2. So um, it doesn't eat away too much from the voice. Um, and then reduce rumble. Sometimes that helps, but you, you want to be careful with that. Like depending on right. um, what audio device you use to capture the audio, this can really um, take a toll on um, the voice. And sometimes reduce reverb might also help. So I would play around with those. Another yeah. thing, yeah, um, go ahead. No, 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 I'm agreeing with you. I mean, I think you can try those effects. You don't want to go extreme with those effects because it really just makes this, mm -hmm. the voice sound wonky. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think if you go to Audition, you can really, really dissect it. I think Audition is more of the proper tool when you're trying to get really advanced stuff like that. Like if you can't do I'd say first try Premiere because I'm not an Audition guy myself either. I stick to Premiere and After Effects, right? And if I can't do it on Premiere... Um, then I might look into audition because that's definitely more of an advanced fix. But if that, mm -hmm. if it's just this, you know, a, a single part of it, just cut it out. <laughs> yeah, that might be the easiest thing, assuming it's not the entire interview. Another thing you might want to try. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes it won't. Is use the parametric equalizer, which um, mm. was a thing I also learned not too late, but quite late in the game, um, I'd say. And what you can do here is you have those different frequencies, right? And um, I don't know what the proper description for them is, but um, you can type in a value here and with that, so um, if I pull on three, that's on two here, um, it's kind of quite broadly and taking out a lot of frequencies, right? Um, but um, I changed the value here for two, for instance, and it's getting narrower. Narrower, is that a word? <laughs> more narrow um uh, yeah anyway. a little, little narrow yeah yeah and so um if you play back the audio it has never been an can, escape for me basically so that's not until i realized it's a very short part but you can basically search with this one for the frequency that is um causing the trouble and maybe um take it out if it's in the lows it might be very possible if it's in the highs i say maybe two but if it's in the mid range you got to be a hard, you got to have a hard time just because it might again take a toll on the voice because those mid frequencies are um, where usually um, our voice is producing noises right <laughs> yep cool um, so another quick time check we got about 10 minutes left so let's see what we can Ooh. knock out in those next 10 minutes and then we'll have let's to go. start wrapping up yeah sure um, any other questions or should i maybe try to uh, um, get a quick 30 seconds um, edit of this yeah or should we just it. watch it back see, well let's watch this whole thing because i think we've done yeah. the edit and we haven't seen the whole thing so let's do that and then maybe we can start on a 30 second edit um and if there's any questions between now and then i'll go ahead yeah. and ask them but yeah so it's let's... one minute and 10 seconds long ideally it should be 95 seconds long to not go over the ig limit and what i would do is literally just cut away a little bit from the beginning there we go 95 seconds and this is it Traveling has never been an escape for me. Until I realized how badly I needed one. I would want to watch the whole thing after that. You got me. 
Thank you. Sucked me in. Um, cool. So I think what would be great to do is we have about 10 minutes. Uh, it's gonna have to be a mm-hmm. speed round. If we don't finish, that's totally okay. But let's see yeah. if we can do a 30 second cut from this. Uh, cause this is Definitely. actually a real world scenario. When you make a cut, sometimes the client wants a minute and then they want to put it on another outlet and then you need 30 seconds for that. So I think it'll be cool to see what the one minute version looks like. And then we go to a 30 second version. So let's go ahead yeah. and see if we can do All right. that. All right, let's go. And I'm going to duplicate that teaser V.3. And what I want to first do before I change the aspect ratio or any of these things, I want to make sure that I'm sh- that I know what 30 seconds of the clip I would actually like to have. And what I'm thinking is, I don't necessarily need the voiceover if I want to post this on um, IGTV, just because people will not necessarily have audio turned on. At least that's what I've heard that people are not always using audio when watching IGTV. Um, but yeah, I think what point. might work um, is to start with this shot and just where the montage begins. Yeah, maybe. Why not? That could work. I mean, that's a very captivating shot and the audio is already playing. Well, we may not, we might not use the audio, right? Or I guess we're assuming most people aren't looking yeah. at audio with Instagram, which is a very good point. So what I'm doing now is, um, like I mentioned earlier, I use INO in and out to um, assess what 30 seconds actually look uh, like. Mm. And that's looking good so far. So I'm again, going with the audio first. I'm just gonna see what happens if we pull the audio to here. Whoops. Usually if um, I would have just created this, I would know what parts and sections of the song are representing what. Since a little bit of time has passed, I do not know it exactly um, right now, but um, so that's also the reason why I play it back again and again. Right about there. So I'm looking for the hits again. You were, you were audibly. Excuse me? Yeah, you were audibly inspecting the waveforms to make that cut. Is that how you made it? You were looking at kind of like the, like where the audio waveform was to be able to like do a very, fitting cut for that? Yeah, very often. So for instance, I see nice. that we have a hit here and uh, it, it does not always work. Like I said, I do not really understand music, unfortunately. That this always makes me sad just thinking about it. But um, it's it's also how I'm learning. Since I don't right understand up. music, I, I need to figure out how to feel it right. If that makes any sense. And yeah, um, wait, and, yeah. And, no, and, waveforms and you're, and you're doing it. Cute. You're doing it the right way. I mean, by by looking at oh. those audio waveforms, you can see where the music is right visually. And that way it's easier to make a cut. You don't want to make it in the middle of a spike, but like right where the spike starts or ends. So cool stuff. Yeah, also also I think because we humans naturally are rather more, not more, but rather visual beings than auditive beings. So, um, but again, maybe that's just me, but um, it feels easier to approach it this way. Whoops. Let's try this instead. Okay, and we're losing time here. So I'm gonna do something different. I'm just gonna go back to where I was and um, look what visuals I have at the very end. So what I wanna do now is um, I will fade the audio out. Like I said, that's um, kind of the lazy way, but if I would be under time pressure, that's how, how I would do it because it just saves me time. And um, now I want to at least end with a good visual that's kind of drawing people in or or gives them a nice feeling to uh, quote unquote set off. Okay. What we need to do is this. 
and delete all that. So um, what I did, um, I'm sorry if I did not articulate what just happened right now, I realized the uh, music and the cuts don't match, which is because I didn't go uh, back far enough. I um, started uh, deleting stuff and pushing stuff around. And um, just because I've already created the, um, this edit, I know that the cuts and the music should match up. So that was gold to um, realize that rather quickly now. Mm -hmm. And it would take a lot of time away if I would rather realize that sooner, uh, later than sooner. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm. Looking good. <laughs> Oops, that's okay. Just let's just leave it at that. Now that's not where I want it to be. I want it to be here. I just heard a little bit of glitching in the audio, so I'm trying to correct that. Not sure if it will work, but I did like where this was going. And I actually like it ending here. So boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's our 30 seconds. I really put you on the hot seat here. We asked you to make a 30 second cut in 10 minutes. And here we are. You're getting it done, my friend. Good stuff. Yeah, I mean, why not? Like, um, like, like we mentioned a few times uh, in this life, um, setting yourself up to challenges really is a fun experience and really helps you level up. So sequence settings gonna change this values oh, to you're going you're going 9 to 16. Style, right? yeah there you go yeah for instagram live and um sometimes i do use auto reframe which um is a feature or an um, effect of adobe premiere and helps you center everything mm, but i am um, just like with color grading i like to do most of the stuff manually um and this is it's not even preference it's just i want to learn as much as possible so I always try to do things manually to understand what I'm doing. And this is also why I'm loving Premiere so much because Premiere literally lets me do everything manually. And when I cannot do it with Premiere, I can try using After Effects, right? Right. Okay, so this is looking good. I want this from to move from left to the right. This is also cool. Um, let's do this. Okay, yeah, so this is messed up. No one knows what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So we won't have the sun, but we will have a hat. I think that's more recognizable. And that stays quite centered. That's nice, but I don't want it, don't want the bird to leave the frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want the focus to be on the waves. Zoop. That works, that works. Okay maybe a tiny little bit to the left um <laughs> should i adjust that <laughs> uh I, what's going on there is that a splash <laughs> that is a wave splash yeah that's um but i actually like those so I'm, yeah, i think I'm, it works for its purpose for sure it kind of match cuts with that grass too that's kind of cool looking at that again yeah thanks um, so I always try to film when I'm filming um, details and um, even more specifically, um, uh, how do you say that, mm, textures. Like mm -hmm. a wave or a splash is not necessarily a texture, but um, I think uh, everyone um, sort of gets the point. And I'm just seeing, so this is a thing that happens to me um, time and time again. I readjust, the, I readjust the size of the clip, but not of the adjustment layer. And yeah. that sometimes leaves me with uh, with a um, weirdly looking frame that I do not always see in the monitor, but only when I render it out. And, you know, then you get into the cycle of rendering things out like five, six times, project final, final, final. Final, final, V2. V3, final, this yeah. time for real <laughs> final. Um, so real quick, Wojtek, we do have to wrap up in about 30 seconds. Right. So maybe we can play this real quick and then we can wrap up. And yeah, uh, I just that so. uh, we some things might not be centered, but that's OK, because we ran out of time. But I think we'll get the idea with a 30 second cut. So, yeah. Let's see how it so looks. Uh, the decline wants the video. We're out of time. And there we go. Yeah.
kind of works, doesn't it? <laughs> Bravo, my friend. Bravo. All right, everybody, oh, we do have to thank hop you. off thanks, pretty Michael. quickly here, but I just want to say thanks again for Voitech. You've been amazing. It's been a pleasure watching you work and having you narrate your workflow. It really, really has been a pleasure. Uh, thank you all again for joining us in the chat. It's always been awesome having you there and joining this conversation with us. Don't go anywhere because we do have Paul Tranny coming up with a second set of Illustrator Creative Challenges and then Cloudy from Print My Soul will be up after us. We got to sign off, but stick around because there's more to come. All right, everybody. See you later.